Welcome to the Princeton Piggyback Operator's Orientation video. We want to show you how to operate the forklift safely. Good operating skills keep you safe and protect those working around you. You will need to view supplemental videos if you are operating a piggyback equipped with a pantograph mast or four-way functionality. Please note that the models shown in this video may differ slightly from your piggyback forklift. In this video, we will discuss daily maintenance checks, operational checks, forklift stability, handling loads, mounting and dismounting, and job site procedures. It is important that you study and understand the operator's instruction manual relating to your machine. The function of the control levers may vary on certain models. Make sure that you study the lever control decal on your piggyback carefully and that you understand it. Hydraulic attachments will also change the layout of your machine's levers. When you come to start work with the piggyback, you should first take a walk around the machine. Check for any structural damage. Check the forks, the carriage, the lift chains, the mast, mast rollers, and hydraulic cylinders for any bends, cracks, or excessive wear. Look for any missing or loose parts. Check to see that there are no foreign objects which could affect operation. Check nuts and bolts for tightness. Inspect all of the hydraulic hoses and fittings for cracks, leaks, or damage. Also, ensure that the operator's manual is present in the manual box on the machine. Check each tire for proper inflation. Inspect the wheels for visible damage, such as dents in the wheels, cuts in the tires, and missing or loose lug nuts. Once you have finished the initial walk around, lift the engine hood using the catch-release lever on the right side of the machine. Place the hood prop rod into the receptacle provided. After a general inspection, check the coolant level in the reservoir. The cap does not need to be removed to check the coolant level. Do not attempt to remove the reservoir cap if the engine is hot. The level should be at the marks on the side of the reservoir. Use the correct coolant as specified in your operator's manual if the level is low. Locate the engine oil dipstick. It may be in different locations depending on the model of your piggyback. Refer to the operator's manual for the location. Remove the dipstick and wipe it clean. Now reinsert it and remove to check the oil level, which should be between the minimum and maximum lines at the end of the dipstick. If the level is low, you need to add oil to the engine. It is critical that the engine oil is added exactly as instructed in the operator's manual. Hydraulic oil levels should be checked with the mast fully lowered and the mast carriage retracted. Look at the sight glass. The level should be between the two lines. If the level is at or below the bottom red line, add the recommended hydraulic fluid as specified in the operator's manual. Climb aboard your piggyback using the steps and handles that are provided. Always use the three-point contact method when mounting or dismounting with three of your limbs in contact with the machine at all times. Adjust and fasten your safety belt. The operator's compartment is designed to give you protection in an accident. If you do not wear your seat belt, you can be thrown out of the machine. Always ensure that the seat belt is securely fastened across your hips before you operate the forklift. Adjust the seat to fit your size. Check the directional pedal to ensure that it is in the neutral position. Look to see that the parking brake is on, and if it is not, engage it at this time. Ensure that there are no people nearby, and, if necessary, warn them that you are about to start the machine. Turn the key to the on position. At this point, check the fuel level by looking at the gauge on the dash. If possible, try to start each day off with a full tank of fuel. Now turn the key to the start position until the starter engages and the engine starts. Check that the warning lights on the dash have gone out and, if they have not, turn the engine off. Do not continue to operate the machine if any warning light remains on. Cycle the hydraulic controls to see that they operate freely. Check each hydraulic control before you begin to operate the machine. Raise and lower the forks. Tilt the mast forward and backward. Side shift the mast to the left and right. Extend and retract the mast. Lower and raise the stabilizer legs. If any of these controls are not working properly, do not continue to operate your machine and notify your supervisor. To check the drive controls of the machine, first release the parking brake. The right foot pedal is the accelerator pedal, which controls engine RPMs. 
This pedal is pressed down to increase RPMs and should be used to control the speed of the machine or hydraulic functions. The left pedal controls the forward and reverse movements of the piggyback. Press forward with your toe to move forward. Press backward with your heel to move backward. By returning the pedal to the midpoint, the piggyback will stop. A conventional forklift is designed to lift and carry a load in front of the wheels. The load remains in this position during transit. A conventional forklift is able to lift the load in this position because it has a large rear-mounted counterweight to counterbalance the load. A conventional forklift is also known as a counterbalanced forklift. It helps to think of any forklift as a kind of seesaw. The front wheels, in this case, are the point of pivot known as the fulcrum point, the center point of the seesaw. If the load exceeds the rated lift capacity of the forklift, the weight of the load will overcome the counterbalance effect and cause the load and the forklift to tip forward. This is why you should never attempt to carry a load that exceeds the rated capacity of the forklift. The piggyback truck mounted forklift is quite different from a counterbalance forklift. It is light enough to be transported on the rear of a truck or trailer and, unlike a conventional forklift, does not have a rear mounted counterweight. Instead, the piggyback has a horizontally moving mast. This has the effect of altering the balance and lift capacity of the machine depending on the position of the mast. Traveling without a load, the piggyback is most stable with the mast fully extended forward and the forks as low as possible to the ground. With the mast fully forward, however, the capacity for lifting will be greatly reduced. To overcome this reduction in lifting capacity, the piggyback is equipped with hydraulic stabilizers. With the stabilizers raised, the fulcrum point is the front wheels. But when the stabilizers are lowered, the fulcrum point moves forward to the point of contact between the stabilizers and the ground. This increases the counterbalance effect and enables the piggyback to lift its rated capacity without the need for a large counterweight. The stabilizers must be lowered before any load is lifted and only raised after the mast has been fully retracted. Always keep the load as low as possible when traveling. Nearly all forklifts are supported at three points which form a stability triangle. This is even true for four-wheeled forklifts because the rear steering axle is attached by a pivot point at its center. This yellow triangle represents the stability triangle of a piggyback with its stabilizers raised. The triangle joins the centers of the three wheels. With the stabilizers lowered, there is a new stability triangle, which joins the stabilizers to the center of the rear wheel. The center of gravity is the point at which an object's weight is concentrated. This is the object's balance point. Both a piggyback and the load that it is lifting will have individual centers of gravity. When the piggyback lifts a load, these centers of gravity will combine and form a combined center of gravity. As long as the combined center of gravity of the piggyback and load stays within this triangle, the forklift is stable and will not tip over. If the combined center of gravity moves outside this triangle in any direction, then the piggyback will tip over in that direction. Three factors affect the movement of the center of gravity. The position of the mast and load, the weight of the load, and the lie of the land. When the mast moves the load forward, the combined center of gravity will also move forward. The heavier the load, the faster the combined center of gravity will move forward. If the load is heavier than the piggyback's rated capacity, even with the stabilizers down, the combined center of gravity will move outside of the stability triangle and the machine will tip forward. Move the same load back into the frame of the piggyback and the center of gravity moves back inside of the stability triangle. This shows how important it is to be aware of the rated capacity of your particular machine and how important it is to lower and retract a load as soon as you possibly can. With the load back and low, the piggyback will remain quite stable even when on the move. Remember that the stability triangle changes when the stabilizers are raised. The third factor affecting the center of gravity, the lie of the land or slope, requires us to see the stability triangle in three dimensions. This is because the pull of gravity comes straight from the center of the earth, regardless of the slope or incline that you may be traveling on. This is why the center of gravity will move as the machine travels up, down, or across a slope. If you need to travel down a hill, never go with the load pointing downhill. You can see that, even with the load back and low, much of the weight lies outside of the stability triangle. There is a risk that the center of gravity will now move outside of the stability triangle and that the machine will tip forward. Always reverse straight down a hill when carrying a load, and never travel with the load high, even with the load retracted. 
If you move up and across a slope with a load carried high, you can see that almost all of the combined weight of the load and piggyback are now outside of the stability triangle. With the combined center of gravity well outside of the stability triangle, the machine and load will tip over backwards. Always travel straight up a hill and do not travel left or right while ascending. Never travel with a load raised and never travel across an incline. Remember, the safest place to be is always in the driver's seat of your piggyback with your seat belt on, which provides the protection of the overhead guard. In the event of a tip over, stay safely seat belted inside of the operator compartment. Lean away from the direction the piggyback is tipping. Brace yourself by gripping the steering wheel tightly. When lifting a cubed load from ground level, First, make sure that it is stable and secure. Check the weight and load center of the load to be lifted. If the weight is not marked or shown on the load, check the weight of the load with your supervisor or have it weighed. If it is too heavy, split the load and restack it. Adjust the forks to suit the load and approach it squarely. Drive into the load until the forks are fully engaged. Lower the stabilizers. Tilt the mast rearward slightly to secure the load. Raise the forks to lift the load. Retract the mast fully. Raise the stabilizer legs and slowly drive away, looking in the direction of travel. When placing a cube load at ground level, first check the area and be certain that the load can safely be placed. Approach the placement area squarely. Lower the stabilizers, ensuring that the surface is strong enough to support them. Extend the mast fully forward. Lower the forks to the ground. Tilt the mast slightly forward to place the load. Raise the stabilizers. Back up carefully, looking in the direction of travel. Wide loads are loads that will not fit between the front wheels of the piggyback. When lifting a wide load, it is particularly important to ensure that the load is stable and secure. Check the weight and load center of the load to be lifted. If the weight is not marked, check the weight of the load with your supervisor or have it weighed. If the load is too heavy, split the load and restack it. Space the forks as far apart as possible. Center the load on the forks and approach it squarely, driving into the load until the forks are fully engaged. Lower the stabilizer legs. Tilt the mast rearward to secure the load. Raise the load to clear the frame and wheels of the piggyback. Retract the mast fully to bring the load over the front wheels. Raise the stabilizers. Carry the load as low as possible above the wheels, keeping the mast retracted fully. Do not side shift while traveling or turning. Make turns slowly and always look in the direction of travel. With a wide load, the best way to travel is in reverse, as you will have the clearest line of sight. Ensure that no part of your body is outside of the operator compartment at all times when traveling in reverse. When placing the wide load at ground level, first check the area and be certain that the load can safely be placed and that the area is free of debris. Approach the placement area squarely. Lower the stabilizers, ensuring that the surface is strong enough to support the stabilizers. Extend the mast fully forward. Lower the forks to the ground. Tilt the mast slightly forward to place the load. Raise the stabilizers. Back up carefully, looking in the direction of travel. When placing a load above ground level, approach the landing area squarely and carefully. Raise the load until it is above the landing area or platform. Drive forward carefully to the landing platform and make sure that the front of the machine does not come into contact with the platform of the truck or trailer. Lower the stabilizers. Extend the mast forward until the load is directly above the landing area. Lower the load carefully until it is touching the landing platform. Tilt the mast forward to position and place the load in the landing area. Raise the stabilizer slowly. Back up cautiously to clear the load and the platform looking in the direction of travel. Lower the forks as soon as possible. When stacking one load on top of another, extra care must be taken. If visibility is restricted, use a signal person or a spotter. Make sure that the lower load is sufficiently strong and secure enough to support the upper load. Be sure to never side shift an elevated load. The stability of the piggyback could be compromised and the machine could tip over. Lower the stabilizer legs. 
extend the mass slowly forward until the upper load is directly over the lower load. Gently lower the forks. Tilt the load into position. Raise the stabilizer legs. Slightly lower the forks to ensure that they are clear of the upper load and back out of the load slowly, looking in the direction of travel. Lower the forks as soon as possible. When mounting the piggyback onto a truck or trailer, first fold the DOT bumper in and pin it if equipped. Next, approach the back of the trailer slowly with the mast extended 5 to 6 inches forward of the mounting hooks on the frame. Center the piggyback with the back of the truck and raise the forks to the level of the fork support brackets. Drive forward slowly until the forks are fully engaged into the mounting kit, tilting the mast forward as you drive in. The upright portion of the fork should contact the rear sill of the truck or trailer. Lower the forks to raise the front tires of the machine slightly off the ground. Tilt the mast fully rearward to raise the rear wheel. Lower the forks using the lift lever until the mounting hooks are slightly higher than the mounting pins. Retract the mast fully to move the machine forward into the mounting kit until the hooks are directly above the mounting pins. Lower the machine onto the hooks by raising the forks. Turn off the engine. Exit the machine using the three-point contact method. Attach the right and left safety chains to the back of the truck or trailer using the pins and lock pins. Press downward on the lower and go button on the left side of the machine to release the hydraulic pressure in the cylinders. This will cause the forklift to settle into the tire pads. The mounting hooks now carry the weight of the piggyback. Connect the electrical cable. Ensure that the transport lights on the piggyback are functioning with the truck or trailer lights. When dismounting the piggyback from a truck or trailer, first remove the electrical cable from the piggyback. Remove the lock pins, disconnect both safety chains, and place them onto the hooks provided on the piggyback. Enter the piggyback's operator compartment using the three-point contact method. Fasten the seat belt. Start the engine using the ignition switch on the dash. The parking brake must be in the off position. Tilt the mast fully rearward. Lower the forks to raise the piggyback until the hooks clear the pins. Extend the mast 5 to 6 inches. Raise the forks to lower the forklift to the ground. Tilt the mast forward until the rear wheel touches the ground. Raise the forks slightly to take up any slack in the mast lift chains and clear the fork support brackets. Back up slowly until the forks are fully clear of the support brackets looking in the direction of travel. Lower the forks to travel position as soon as possible. If equipped, extend and pin the DOT bumper on the truck or trailer. When making a delivery to a job site, first you must find a suitable and safe area for offloading. Check with the site supervisor. Remember that a truck with a piggyback does not need to park exactly where a load needs to be placed. The piggyback will allow the load to be placed in locations where a delivery truck would have very little room to maneuver. Always be sure to check that there are no overhead power lines or other dangers where you will be operating the piggyback. If you must park on an incline, make sure to chock the wheels of the truck or trailer. Be careful not to hit the edge of the truck or trailer with the mast of the piggyback. Lower the stabilizers. Lift the load to clear the platform. Tilt the mast rearward to stabilize the load. Retract the mast fully. Raise the stabilizer legs. Back away from the truck or trailer looking in the direction of travel. Lower the load to the transport position as soon as possible. Be aware of the extra space that is now required to maneuver because of the extra length of the load. As you turn, always keep an eye on the clearance between the load, trailer, and any other obstacles. In job site areas, there are frequently hazards at ground level. Only travel over ground that you know is free of obstacles. Remember that your vision may be restricted by your load when traveling forward, so you must scout your route before moving forward. If necessary, get assistance. The drop site must also be checked for any obstacles or debris that would prevent the load from sitting in a stable position. Park and clear your drop site carefully. With heavy loads, smoothness of movement is vital. High speed movements will tend to make placing the load faster but jerky. Medium speed movements makes the process much smoother and safer. Engaging the diff lock gives you equal, positive drive to all three wheels of the piggyback. Use the diff lock if one or more of the wheels lose traction while traveling through soft or slippery conditions. 
Also use the diff lock to maintain traction while traveling up slopes and to improve braking and traction when reversing downhill. The diff lock should only be used when traveling in a straight line and turned off once the obstacle has been cleared. To engage the diff lock, first stop the piggyback. Ensure that the rear wheel is straight ahead. Engage the diff lock using the switch on the dash. All three wheels will now have equal drive. When you no longer require the diff lock, simply push the switch to the off position. The demonstrations you have seen in this video are intended to help you operate the piggyback truck mounted forklift safely and protect those and those around you. It is required that you take the necessary training and be certified to operate your machine. Ask your employer to arrange for a full certification before operating the piggyback.